this is all the words uh, that links to Agile that is uh, linked with Agile. Okay. So a bit background about myself. Um, I first learned and participated in an uh, Agile uh, methodology about five years ago. And this was uh, with a team in Australia and later on in New Zealand. And basically, um, the whole company, the whole uh, team also started off Agile at the same time. And so basically, they hired uh, Agile coaches in to basically bring us all on board. And that's where my Agile journey started. Currently, I'm not using Agile. My current company doesn't, doesn't believe in Agile, but oh well, that's exactly what, right? Okay, so yep, this is Agile. Um, let's figure out what it's all about, right? So in 2001, uh, 17 software practitioners, basically, they came together and came out and coined this term Agile. Okay, they came out with the Agile Manifesto. Okay, and the idea that is that requirements, you know, are and solutions evolve through time, right? And then basically, collaborative, uh, the collaborative effort of self-organizing uh, self teams uh, and cross-functional teams actually uh, works a lot better uh, through this involvement of requirements. Basically, requirements are not fixed. The idea is that requirements are not fixed and evolve. That's why we need self-organizing team and self uh, cross-functional teams. It advocates uh, adaptive planning Evolutionary development, early delivery, and continuous improvement encourages rapid and flexible ch responses to change. Okay, that's the key. These principles basically support the definition and continuing evolution of many software development methods. Okay. So throughout the years, this um, Agile manifesto actually um, brought about different types of Agile methodologies out there. Okay, let's have a look. Um, okay, so this is the Agile manifesto. And basically, this is the basis of, basically, this is the core of what are all the different software methodologies that we have today. Okay? So basically, what this means, uh, the processes and tools are important. We know that these are building blocks. These on the right-hand side are the building blocks of all software projects out there, right? Processes and tools, definitely we know that's important. So this, uh, without processes and tools, basically, we can't really view the whole project clearly, and so on and so forth. Comprehensive documentation is definitely very important. It's our main form of communication about what that software does. And um, yep, contract negotiation is where the money comes in. Without a contract negotiation, we don't get any profit from your software. And the rest, uh, following a plan is definitely important because without a plan, you have no goal. Without a goal, you don't see an end point. Right? But, a job manifesto basically says that this on the left should be held more important than those on the right. So traditionally, we know those on the right is what builds a software. And those on the left should be considered a lot more important. What this means, individuals and interactions, right? Individuals and interactions are basically the teamwork, the ones building the, using the processes and tools are a lot more important than the processes and tools themselves. Working software is definitely more important than comprehensive documentation. Without a working software, documentation is just down the drain. Right? Customer collaboration is more important. What this means is that you need to collaborate and make sure you get what the customer wants to deliver what the customer wants instead of just consider the contract negotiation. Okay? And responding to change is definitely more important than following a plan. This is the, on the basis that, yes, requirements will change, and it's more important to respond to this uh, requirements change than to follow a plan that was fixed. Don't know how many months ago. Okay. And from these four uh, rules in Agile Manifesto came about the 12 principles that supports those four rules. And let's go through them. Okay. Highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. So you see this, this is an iteration, right? First, you get the requirements, you consult the customer, you develop the software, and then you have your software, you have your product. And then you go back, let the customer see your product, get your next requirement, see whether it satisfies any changes, and then you go back, work through the software, and then you get your product again. So these are iterations of an agile uh, project. 
and with changing requirements, so change is good. We expect change, and basically any change anywhere we should welcome it, right? This allow us to basically um, respond to the change that the customer requires, and basically give the customer a competitive edge, right? And we to deliver software frequently, and basically this means weeks, not months. Make sure that we have an iteration couple of weeks instead of months. And basically the requirements not fixed. The requirements are basically we, we get the requirements as late as possible. Basically the start of the iteration, then only we fix the requirements. Then only we start planning. Okay? And all the time and resources should be fixed through time boxing and small teams. I'll explain why small teams is important later. And we plan for each iteration. Okay. This is the third. Uh, principle. Now the fourth principle, that the business people and developers must work very closely together. Basically, uh, what this means is that the developers should always have access to the customers or the business. This is important. And next, need to build projects around motivated individuals. So the individuals are the ones that will be building the software. So we need to keep them happy, keep them motivated, and they need to be able to take initiatives. And most efficient and effective way of conveying any idea, right? This is like what we're trying to do with anything we do in project. It's like the fastest way from A to B. Fastest way to communicate an idea is face to face. No doubt about that. Not through email or anything like that and not through Skype, right? Uh, yep. Working software is a primary measure of progress. So basically, regardless of anything else, any milestones, it has to have a working software. It's a key. And it has to be a sustainable development. So constant, constant pace, the, each iteration should be the same amount of time, right? Same length of time. And Basically, if you, if you think, oh, let's just um, do the hard work now, we can rest when the, 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 the project has ended, that means that you're already off the, off the, off the rails, <laughs> to so to speak. So, yep. Make sure that it's sustainable, that you don't, the team doesn't take on more than it, it can handle. Okay. And continuous attention to technical excellence, right? Technical excellence, good design, continuous testing, all this equals a quality product. And a quality product means a happy customer. Simplicity is the key. The simpler it is, the better it is. Simple rules for anything, simple um, requirements, simple design is always the best. The more simple it is, the more effective it is. Self-organizing teams, what does this mean? Means no managers allowed. Okay? So the team are the ones that organize themselves. They pick up the, 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 the tasks that they, think they know they can do. And basically, the customers are the ones that set the priority, of course. And they have to pick the tasks from the priority list. And they, surprisingly, this actually comes out with a better product. And regular intervals, the team should reflect on how to become more effective regularly. Basically, on every iteration, the team should come together and see how they can better themselves. Right? This is, you know, this is like learning. You know, learning has no ending. You are always learning. You are always improving. Right? Different teams, you might have different things, and the next day you might be joining a different team, and you work differently also. Okay. So these are the twelve principles of agile. Next, we'll look at the Agile methodologies. Right? So this, there's a lot of different Agile methodologies out there. This is not an exhaustive list. Right? I'll go through only three of them. Sorry, uh, before I move on to the methodologies, this uh, extreme programming and so on and so forth. Any questions? Hi, uh, okay, from the user perspective, not the technical perspective, how would I be able to convince uh, that Agile is the best solution for a particular project? Yep. Yeah. So, this, to me, um, this uh, question has been asked a lot of people. And in my point of view, really, this is all about the culture change of the entire company. So, 
the best way, if you ask me, is just get everybody to attend an Agile course. <laughs> right, and then they'll be convinced. But yeah, but uh, in terms of how you can um, convince them, uh, through example. Is there some features of a project that are better suited to Agile technology or a methodology and some features of another project which are more suited to another methodology? Is there that kind of a comparison that we work with Agile? Yes, certainly. So, uh, if you go online, there is a particular chart that tells you that, um, for example, Scrum will tell you that it is more suited towards complex problems. The more complex it is, then it's more suited towards Agile. If for simple projects, you probably don't even need to touch Agile. Right? And um, a couple of rules that Scrum also dictates is that your team should be three to nine people. Mm -hmm. And if it's too big, break them out into two teams. If it's too small, don't bother. Right? You work better face to face and you just sit next to each other. But definitely you can incorporate some of the agile methodologies, that's for sure. But yeah, there is yes, a couple of rules out there that you can determine whether or not it's suited for you. Yeah. Any questions? Others? Okay, let's look at what extreme programming is all about. First recorded use is in 1996. That is before the Agile Manifesto came about, right? Yeah. And why is it called extreme? Because it actually takes the best practices to the extreme. Uses frequent releases in short development time boxes, formal checkpoints, right? And often used inside the Scrum framework. If you look at the, uh, the Scrum framework later, basically most of these also also inside. And it basically uh, incorporates through these five essential values. So it talks about the values. Let me see if I can find this. Yes, that's right. So communication we talked about. Communication is key to any team. Let me tell you, I. To me, communication is the most important thing of everything, right? Good communication is always better. You get everything will be done a lot smoother, everything will be better. And you basically improve the teamwork basically through communication. Simplicity, again, is a key. The more simple it is, the more effective is your project. Feedback is very important. Basically, this is how we learn. Without feedback, we don't learn. We're just stuck in the same uh, motion basically. We need feedback to basically uh, learn about things. And this will come to a slightly different stance of feedback. I'll show you later. And um, respect, not just respect for your team members, but self respect as well is very important. Right? This uh, links to the uh, motivated individual that I talked about just now. And courage. Courage is okay. So, this thing about courage is. In terms of the individual, courage have the courage to make changes, okay, to make um, code refactoring, to be able to speak out if they know know that um, there's a better way to do things, or even they just want to have a question, the courage to question uh, what your whether you have anything uh, that you want to question, you want to ask about, speak up. This courage is very important to have a good communication. That's for sure. And in order for you to have that courage, you need to be able to build a safe environment for the team. Okay, so this is an extreme programming um, feedback loop, planning feedback loop. It starts with a release plan. So you start off any project at all, you have your release plan. Basically, this release plan is for the months. And sometimes, basically, you have more than one plan. Basically, you know that there's going to be change in requirements. It's just a dummy plan for the months. So and then you have your iteration plan in terms of weeks. So no longer than a month. Make sure your iteration plan only cover weeks. Acceptance tests to be done in days. And stand up meeting once every day. Pair negotiation between developers. This should be done in a matter of hours. And unit tests should be done in a matter of less than an hour. Pair programming. Again, should be done basically. What is, why, why is it second is bad? You are constantly coding, you are constantly doing it. So, a pair program and code. And then it goes back. Right? Go back and back and back. So, every month you go back to a new release plan. Every iteration, you go, uh, every few weeks you go back to a new iteration plan. Every couple of days you go back to a new acceptance test. Every day you go back and get another stand up meeting. That's where this feedback loop comes in. So basically, the concept. This is the concept of XP. And basically, if you do it 
properly, if you basically implement this properly, you'll get an improved productivity, quality product, and customer satisfaction. Okay? Similarly, this is it. So the, the loop is the iteration. You have your unfinished features, and then you rank them uh, from the most important features to your least important features. And the most important features get incorporated into your iteration planning. And then honest plans is very important. Daily communication, team empowerment, working software. This is the project heartbeat. Okay. So four basic development, uh, four basic coding activities that we know of. Right? Everybody is quite familiar of the coding, the testing, listening, and the designing. Okay. So that's uh, extreme programming. Any questions about this? Next, we look at lean programming. So these are the seven lean principles. Eliminate waste, amplify learning, decide as late as possible, deliver as fast as possible to empower the team, build integrity, and to see the whole picture. Okay. So the idea about lean programming is uh, basically Eliminate waste, basically, the, the, the basic concept. And this comes about from Toyota uh, manufacturing, actually. So they came about it basically to get rid of um, what they consider the three different wastes. Uh, let's see. Yep. Um, waste, uh, get rid of uh, overburdening the team as well as unevenness of the process. So I'll go through the eliminate waste. So, in terms of software, these are the ways that we need to get rid of. Okay, basically this is the ways that we are talking about. So no wrong feature or product, no mismanaging of the backlog. Uh, backlog is basically a, a list of requirements, so to speak, a list of features that you'll be working on, ranked from the most important to the least important. This is your backlog. Get rid of reworking. Get rid of unnecessary complex solutions. Get rid of extraneous cognitive load. Uh, that means extra brain power that is not required, basically. All those work that requ uh, requires cognitive load. Get rid of any psychological distress in the team. Right? What that means? No bureaucracy, no politics. Right? No waiting, no multitasking. Everybody, they work on one feature at a time. Don't overburden them with multitasks. No knowledge loss, make sure that we retain all knowledge possible. And no ineffective communication. Basically, this means just have a good communication involved. Right? Amplify learning through show and tell, through short iterations. What that means is that every iteration you reflect, right? Once you reflect, you learn. Set based development. Uh, Set-based development is basically a practice that keeps requirement and design options flexible for as long as possible during the development. What this means is that you choose uh, the design upfront and you, s you set it uh, right at the start of the iteration and not before. Uh, yep. Think. Yes. So set-based design is basically uh, it maintains multiple requirements and design options for as long as possible. That's what it means. Okay, Kaizen is a Japanese uh, term that basically means continuous improvement of the process. So every iteration, you improve on it. So this is a continuous bit comes in. Decide as late as possible. Again, uh, it's the same thing as what I mentioned just now. Basically, you only decide at the start of the iteration and you deliver as fast as possible. As short an iteration as possible, that allows you to deliver faster. Just in time programming. means. Okay, workout. Um, it's called the workout technique. Uh, what that means is that the roles are turned around. The managers are the ones that will be listening to the developers, not the other way around. So the managers are taught to how to listen to developers so they can explain uh, better what actions to take next. As, my, as well as provide suggestions for improvements, right? And human resources. What this means is that we do not treat people as a resource. Okay, this is one of the key things is that um, when you talk about resources, it should be in terms of time or money or, or actual resources like location and equipment, but not in terms of people. So this uh, 
uh, it, how do I explain this? Oh, sorry, mind blank for a moment. Uh, yeah, I think you, you get what I mean. <laughs> so yeah, so if we take the human, the, the people out of the resource uh, planning, we actually gain a better perspective of the project. That's where human resources comes in, where people are treated as human resources rather than a resource of the project. And self-organization, basically the team organize themselves. They are the one that will be building a product. They will be the one that will make the suggestions. They will be the one that will come up with the solution. Right? And customer access is very important. This is where we get team empowerment. With customer access, you have team empowerment. It gives them the ability to do the next two things. Inbuilt integrity. So perceived integrity is um, integrity in the customer's eyes. Right? This integrity to the customer. A um, better product will give you better perceived integrity. Conceptual integrity is the integrity of the team. And architectural integrity is the integrity of your software. And of course, the integrity testing is basically to test all this, um, your integrity of your software. Okay. And the last uh, principle, the seven in principle, is to see the whole, to see the big picture, and to make sure that every team member understands the idea, the lean thinking idea. Questions before I move to the next one? Great stuff. Everybody answer anything. <laughs> All right, next we look at Kanban. So who has seen Kanban before? Right? It's a familiar, um, familiar scene to most of people. Okay, so these are the different ways to do a Kanban. And basically, it literally means signboard, a message board in Japanese, right? And basically, Kanban is an inventory control system to control supply chain that was developed by Toyota, who is surprised. <laughs> so it was developed by an engineer at Toyota. And basically, uh, Kanban is a message board. Basically, it just goes from left to right. And each card, Kanban card, is a task. So how to build a Kanban straight away? Very easy, just by these five steps. Capture the team's high-level routine. Basically, what does the team do anyway? Right? Capture it, uh, create the streamline, and redecorate your wall. Right? Set limits to the chaos, of course. Um, basically, what this means is that make sure you have only a set number of cards on the first, on any column, on any given column. Right? And to define done. Define done means define the definition done. Uh, be very clear what it means by done before you can move one card to the next, right? And to run daily stand up. Okay. So through this, we let's look at Toyota six rules about Kanban. Right? Later processors picks up the number of items from the earlier process. What it means is that each card should only go from the left to the right. Right? And only when they have completed that process, then only they are allowed to move to the next. Right? to be considered done. Earlier process produced items that are of quality, sequence included. What I just said, sorry. And yep, all processes cannot be without the Kanban board. This means just make sure that every single one of them is illustrated as a card on your Kanban. Right? And um, basically, every, uh, uh, what this shows is that each card is a pull process, not a push. What this means is that only when the engineer is available to pick up a task, then only he'll pick that card, put it on the, ne uh, on the next uh, stream. Okay, and how does this work? Basically, if you look at here, you see that there are, there are these little names right there, right? So when you pick up a task, you put your name on the card. Simple as that. Okay. Any questions? Nope. Give you a brief view is that you know, this is our women who code um, trailer board. There are a couple of tools out there that does similar Kanban style. Right? You have your activity, your resources, and so on and so forth. And GitHub also now has a project board. Similarly, you have your to-do in progress done. Similarly, you can assign people to them. Right? All these are cards. Similarly. Now, for Kanban, the one of the key things about Kanban is it has to be visible to all, and visible to the team especially, of course, that is doing the work at all times. 
So what this means is that this actually does not fit the definition because this, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, everybody on the PC, not actually on the wall. So they do uh, encourage to have the Kanban on the wall and most of these uh, manufacturing companies, what they do is they have an electronic Kanban. So it's always displayed on it's a big screen TV and the Kanban is always displayed to everybody on the team. All right. Uh, yep, and that's it. Yes. Questions? Can Trello replace the digital Of course. Uh, of course. Yeah, so just uh, again, like you just have a big screen TV, have your trailer board on it at all times. Yeah. There's a point on self-organization. I just want to, um, if you can share some detail on how does it work, because when we thought about self-organization in a team, a lot of time people don't really understand each, each other's tasks and maybe their advantage and how each other can work together on projects. So a lot of time you still need a manager to uh, delegate different tasks to people. So I'm not sure how does it work. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So, so all these twelve principles has to come together. So you can't just pick self organization and just run with it. Communication has to be tied in as well. So basically, communication within your team members. So everybody have to see the whole picture, understand what everybody is doing, and organize to come up with a solution. That's the idea. So yeah, uh, it also ties in with the team empowerment. You know, you make sure that your team, each member, actually understands the big picture, understands the communication through within each team member and how they can develop and come out with the feature, with you know as perfect as possible. In Scrum, there is also the Scrum Master who is here to help to communicate and to answer these issues. So the role of Scrum Master is not a uh, manager. That's for sure, right? Yes, so it's to facilitate it. Basically, they are there to answer any question in terms of the process, not actually how the team operates. So the best, uh, a Scrum Master who has done her job, his or her job, basically, is one who can recruit, you know, uh, excuse herself after uh, a couple of iterations. Basically, we don't need a Scrum Master anymore. It means that he or she has done a great job, the team can run on its own. typical dynamic in an agile team? Like how do people actually work together? Yeah, so in uh, agile team, make sure that it's definitely it's a cross-functional team. What that means is that each member should be able to do um, the work of the other. <laughs> so they might not be an expert in that work, but basically they should understand at least what everybody you know, in that team is doing to be able to come up with a complete solution. So basically, uh, you should have tester, you should have developer. If that's how uh, your project is run, you should have. It should be a complete team that basically everybody uh, should be able to come up. That the team should be able to come up with a complete solution. What that means. Another thing is that in agile, developer does not mean software engineer. The developer in an agile team could be your BA, a business analyst. It could be your tester. It could be your your uh, your test engineer. It could be your um, data scientist. It does not have to be the software engineer. So all these people, these different roles, should come about and should be able to develop a complete solution in that feature. Good question. And. If anything else, you can always approach me after this. And did I overshot? I'm so sorry. Pizzas? Let's have a quick break before our next speaker. Mm -hmm.